Hi, welcome to Swedish Startup Sessions. I'm Annika Lydner and this week we will re listen to Rerav. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas the way to heart. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim use a gene. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bitch, you'll be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all. You ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Claim use a gene. Please believe. This ain't Sweden Witness a massacre In Middle East to Africa It should be thanking God This is, this is the Swedish Startup Sessions Startupjob.se It's a spanking brand new service that we built during 24 hour business camp this past week in Stockholm. It's a matchmaking service between startups who are looking for people to join them and people who are looking to join startup either as co-founders or as employees. And three hours into this 24 hour business camp we started to get customers and we have a host of brilliant Swedish startups that have joined us uh, and if you are looking to for a job at one of these startups or if you want to add your startups to startupjob.se just go to yeah you guessed right startupjob with two b's dot se hi welcome back uh, I'm here with uh, Fritjof Andersson from new startup Rerav and what's that? Um, well Rerav it's a uh... Facebook page customer service system. So basically what it is is uh, companies that have their Facebook pages to do customer service, they, um, they can keep track of what customers they've actually answered and whom they've not answered and also who internally is uh, in charge of what question and uh, also get the statistics, the, um, the customer service statistics and not the marketing statistics. Yep on their presence on their on their Facebook page. Uh, and uh, how how uh, how did you come up with that? Uh, I had long discussions with uh, companies that have their customer service on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, uh, larger companies that have issues with uh, well, keeping track of all the questions, um, especially if if you get a question and then you get 80 other questions, and then that question that you got a week ago, you get another comment on that one. And to find that question, you get the little notice, yeah. uh, the notification in Facebook. But if you miss that, you have to manually go through all the questions on your Facebook page to uh, see if there's something you missed. And that's it's just doesn't work for for a larger company. So, so. And do you have a background in in customer service or? Uh, What's your I, background? Uh, well, I'm, a, I'm a computer geek. <laughs> <coughs> I, I sit around and, and, and program stuff for fun, so that's 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 what I've done for 12 years or something yeah. like that. And I'm, uh, I've been an IT consultant for, for a long, long time and, and done uh, market strategy and marketing strategy. Uh, so this was this was a natural next step and when the idea popped into my head during one of these discussions yeah. then I just realized I, I have to do this. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what's really disruptive with this with this idea you think? Um, I think the, the the biggest disruptive thing about it is, is looking at the Facebook page as uh, a customer service channel and not a marketing channel. Yeah. Which may seem um, obvious when you say it, but a lot of companies use marketing tools to uh, to work with their Facebook or yeah. Twitter accounts and um, I, I remember Brian Solis a bunch of years ago he said uh, customer service is the new new marketing yeah and I, I think there's a lot to that so um, and if you want if you want to do real customer service then you can't use a marketing tool no. to do marketing no. to do customer service you have to have an actual customer service system and there are great customer service systems for, for phone and for email and for a bunch of different channels but there are no great uh, customer service systems for Facebook pages yeah. so that's why I, I felt like I have to do this. 
but but isn't it risky to to sort of build on top of one platform oh, yeah. and be dependent on <coughs> that platform? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and uh, well, Facebook, uh, the, the Facebook API where we get all the all the data from the from the pages, it's it's not really a stable API. They actually have two APIs, and uh, well, one normal API and one real time API. Yeah. And uh, the real time API. It basically doesn't work at all. Mm. So we have we've had to spend months and months on, on building a custom solution to get all the, the data from the customers' uh, Facebook pages. Mm. And so we spent a lot of time time on that. And how's your your relationship with Facebook? Because I know we, we uh, people who follow the social media and, and the startup scene know that, for instance, Eber Media had a big problem with Twitter when they built yeah. on top of, of the Twitter Firehose. Yeah. Uh, so how's your your relationship there? Are, are they aware of what you're doing? or They're, they're aware of it, but yeah. the relationship is pretty much non-existent. <laughs> um, and, and it seems like there are um, people within Facebook don't seem to talk that much to each other, because mm -hmm. um, when I talk to the Swedish guys, they know exactly what's happening in Sweden, mm -hmm. but they don't know what's happening in the in the new tech stuff. Yeah. And, and the other way around, when I talk to the tech guys in the forums, or when they answer me in the forums, um, they don't know about the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's there's definitely issues in, in the communication with with Facebook, and, and especially with the with the. Uh, issues with the technical stuff. Maybe they need a product like Jammer to keep the internal. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what they use. Maybe they use like a huge Facebook group or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, at the same time, I, I really, uh, I really, I feel for them because they have a huge, huge, huge task ahead of them to to get all this technology to, to work at the level that they want to and get mm. th their APIs to work. So uh, of course they can't have discussions with all the companies that are going to build business models on top of their APIs. But when there are 10, 20 people saying this does not work at all, yeah. then uh, I feel that they should have more focus and, 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 and listen to, to the developers mm. around the world. What's your business model? It's a, <coughs> well, I'd like to call it a demium. Okay, that's so a new one. <laughs> yeah, Demium. A Demium. Yeah, it's a, um, it's basically a combination uh, of freemium and demo. Yeah. So, I, there are a lot of great uh, services out there that use freemium. Yeah. But people don't really know about the, the premium part of it. Mm. They don't know the functions. They don't know the all all that stuff. So, so I I want to have um, I want to have a trial period. X days uh, a trial period. And then you get uh, still a good service after that uh, period, but uh, you pay to get the premium service. Yeah. But honestly, we haven't decided fully on the on the business model uh, yet. We're still working on yeah. that, and actually, we're going to crowdsource it. <laughs> okay. So, so we're going to ask people in a, in a while how 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 would you want to pay for this service? Yeah. And we think that the premium uh, version is going to be the one that works, but we don't know yet. So. So and I can people. guess that it's mostly big corporations that have, have the need for this kind of service, and they want a stable service that that will be long term and not just you know blow out and, and lack of money. Yeah, no I, I think that the, the biggest need is going to be in, in the larger corporations, mm. but also smaller companies and organizations are going to uh, need a service like this to keep track of who have we actually answered and who have we not answered. And especially when you when you look at stuff like um, if you have a company and you're the you're the customer service agent and you get a, you get ten questions, yeah. five of those you can answer straight ahead. Yeah. You, you just answer them. But five of them you don't know, so you have to ans ask some of your colleagues. So you send out a few emails and ask them, okay, we got this question on our Facebook page, um, how should we answer? Mm -hmm. And if they don't answer you that day. Then you have to remind them, and you have to remember those emails yep. to the next day. And then you send out five more emails, and after a while, you get uh, you have all these emails out there yep. that you can't can't keep track of. And in a larger corporation, then you, then you're going to have a bunch of different people that work with customer service. And so nobody that, knows so what yeah. the other people are doing. Yeah. So then you have a big problem. So you need one system to keep track of all, all that stuff. 
And how big, big is your team on this? Two people. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't sleep. That's okay. Basically, it. That, that's a good. Idea. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so, but that's our that's our dev team, me and my partner, yeah. and we built this. And but right now we're obviously having discussions with some other people mm -hmm. about joining the company. Yeah. Great. Um, who are your biggest competitor or main competitors? That's that's kind of scary because I can't really find any really good competitors, and that. That you know, as an entrepreneur, I mm -hmm. want to think that that means that you know, I'm, I'm the brightest guy ever. <laughs> but it probably doesn't. It, it probably means that this is a really, really new market. Yeah. And there's, it's probably not a big market mm -hmm. yet. But I believe it's going to grow. So that's what I'm going for. This. Mm -hmm. uh, the only really, uh, really close competitor I could find is Code Queen, because yeah. they, because they have, yeah, yeah. they have a, um, a premium service um, that. Uh, where you can hook up your Facebook mm -hmm. uh, account and do uh, some of the things that we do. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's definitely going to be one of our competitors, mm -hmm. and they've got a huge market share also. So yeah. yeah. But but uh, I, I'm not really sure they they have that kind of penetration in Europe though, uh, like they have in the states. No, in the states they're they're big, yeah. and they have a great service as mm -hmm. well, especially for Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so I have, I have a lot of respect for them, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to do it better. And um, how? Wh when did you found this company? Uh, the idea popped in my head uh, about a year ago, mm -hmm. 14 months ago. And uh, then the first few months we had discussions with different companies, trying to figure out how should we tackle this and what's the actual problem uh, and where's the actual customer value in this. <coughs> and, uh, and then development started and we actually did a bunch of huge reviews because we, we created um, <coughs> we created uh, uh, models of how we thought it should look like. We got feedback, rebuilt it, and you know, totally. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of time on on, on prototyping. Uh, and, but now we have a version that is uh, good. It's really good. And what what stage is it now? Is it alpha release for certain customers or? Uh, we um, we're hoping that within a few weeks mm -hmm. we're going to go into close beta, mm -hmm. and you know. There are some customers that have been on the waiting list for 14 months, mm. or potential customers. Uh, so those are, they're obviously going to be the first ones to get in. Uh, and then we have this long waiting list of, of uh, great, interesting companies that want to try our product out. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, let them in within the next month. But I can't mm. make any promises. It's, it's basically all up to if we get the last things to work with uh, the Facebook API, which is the big tricky thing in this. So you have nightmares about that? Well, almost, <laughs> almost, yeah. When, when you sleep, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, how, how have you, your company been funded? Is it bootstrapping or do you have investors? No investors, it's mm. just lack of sleep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are your goals? Are, are is Sweden your market or, or do you see uh, expansion abroad? Oh, definitely international. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a product that we're going to start out with the customers, uh, the potential customers that we've talked to here in Sweden that we've had contact with for over a year. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be our, our base obviously, but this is an international product and this is the kind of product that we cannot make profitable only in Sweden. Mm. We need to go in and out, yeah. and um, and we're we're building support for that technically as well. Uh, Google Plus has said that they're going to release uh, Google Plus for businesses within, yeah. uh, you know, quite quite uh, yeah. shortly. Uh, you see a, a similar uh, really to, interesting yeah, that, that, similar that be, service there. That would be so much fun uh, yeah. adding the Google Plus uh, uh, functionality into this. That would be great mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, so, so what is your the most important lesson when you have uh, during this process with your startup that you have learned? Oh, have fun. <laughs> it, well, it's it's all about yeah. having fun. I believe life is about having fun. Yeah. Having fun at work and making money so you can have fun in your spare time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, so that's what it's all about. And if you do stuff that you hate, then you're not going to produce great results. Mm -hmm. And and this is a lot of fun. So, mm -hmm. so I think it's going to be great for our mm -hmm. customers. I know that you have a background within big co companies. Uh, so, what is your, uh, what have you learned during this process that you you think you could give an advice to bigger companies? Well, have uh, fun. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was at 
one of the biggest corporations in the world and and uh, in those companies you do stuff really well but it takes a long long time mm. I mean, it, it's taken us a year to develop this project yeah. that's a that's a long time uh, but still we're doing something that's completely new and um, uh, at the bigger corporations I think obviously Google they're doing a great job in, in letting their em employees having fun and mm -hmm. doing stuff that they think is fun 20% of their time yeah so yeah I'm not gonna say anything revolutionary there just have have fun and, yeah. and, and let your employees have fun and you're gonna produce great results yeah that's a good good one uh, do you have any advice to other entrepreneurs hmm. yeah look at look at the actual uh, problem that you're going to solve because I, I I talk to a lot of people <coughs> sorry I talk to a lot of people that come up with great technical solutions uh, for a problem that really doesn't exist hmm. and uh, and that could be a lot of fun doing if you're into the programming and yeah. that stuff um, but yeah I, I look at the actual problem that you're going to solve that that's what it's always going to yeah. come down to because when you have the discussion with a customer they're going to ask you, okay, what problem are you going to solve for me and how much will it cost me? Mm. And uh, it's, it's easy to lose that in, in the process of doing everything else around the, yeah. in, in the company. I usually say, you know, develop what hurts the client the most. Yeah. Uh, because then, they, then they're willing to pay for it. Yeah. Um, so, um, what's your general view on, on the Swedish startup scene? Uh, I think there's a lot of fun stuff happening. Um, there's uh, there's two sides to it. There are a lot of people with great ideas that do great stuff. On the other side, I, I there's a lot of talk about uh, like government uh, support for startups. I've never really seen that. I, yeah. I don't know where they're hiding, but I they're doing something. I've I just, I've never seen anything great come out of it. It's, um, I think it mostly goes to like research-based companies maybe, that yeah. ten, takes ten years to do anything. Maybe or something. <laughs> I actually went once to uh, one of those uh, Almi with an idea. Uh, it was a bunch of years ago, and uh, I know now that it was a good idea because there was another company that started it, yeah. and and they're doing they're they're making good money today. Mm. Uh, but the feedback that I got was basically, well, there's another company that's doing a similar thing in the U.S., so don't. Okay. So they actually convinced me to not start this company. Yeah. And <laughs> so that that's the only really great feedback thing. you've yeah. gotten. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but there are, there are some great student uh, organizations that that help mm. uh, startups, and, but they're they're doing more like you know evangelizing. To, yeah, and telling yeah. that this is this is a good thing, you know. Go do your thing, and and, mm. and that's that's the important thing. Mm. I read this uh, manual or something uh, a few months ago, explaining what is uh, how do you start your company, mm. and it was basically okay. You go to this government website and you fill out this form, and you go to this government website and you fill out this form, and that's just to get like the legal company running. But there was nothing about have fun and think about what the customers want. Nothing like yeah, that. It was just yeah. the legal stuff, and if that's what they're teaching, then you know. And usually, I mean, one of the hardest things, at least when you, when you develop in, in the web, internet, tech sector, yeah. uh, that's getting a technical founder. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, I mean, no matter where <coughs> you are, if you're in Silicon Valley or if you're here, I mean, that's one of the really tight areas to get somebody who is both, um, you know, a visionary and, and prepared to do, live the startup life and is a great engineer. Yeah. But you, you already have that in-house. So. <laughs> I, I hope. Yeah. Thank you for talking to me. Thank uh, you so much for yeah. having me. And best luck on your upcoming release. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And this is all, all this week from Swedish Startup Sessions.